What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight we're going to be talking about the 12 plus new weapons in Season 3, some additional gameplay previews, plus even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder, there's plenty of brand new content going up over on Detonated.com for those who want additional article coverage of multiplayer at Warzone and Zombies, plus there's plenty of tweets every single hour on Detonated's Twitter. Really appreciate over 25,000 followers on that Detonated Twitter page, but there's been a lot to break down as of this week with the full reveal of Season 3. I appreciate all your support on my recent videos. Over the next few days, there is still a lot I want to take away from the blog post and make individual videos on, so keep notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on inside of Call of Duty. Also, thank you guys for the support on this afternoon's episode of the Bombshell Podcast. We had an in-depth discussion on everything coming out starting on April the 3rd, but this morning we also got a brand new Rebirth Intel drop from the Call of Duty YouTube channel, which was hosted by Binox, who is in charge of redeveloping Rebirth Island for the brand new Warzone application. We actually had a car a developer who I actually got to meet at the Vondel Capture event last year. It's a really nice individual, really insightful and very talented. He actually went through some of the steps of how they brought back Rebirth Island in present day. And it was a really cool overview of the updated points of interest, how the gameplay and pacing works. But we also got to see some footage of the new Morse sniper rifle, right? This is returning from Advanced Warfare 2014. It will be featured in the Season 3 Battle Pass, but we got some nice looks at the inspect animation, it being fired. It looked phenomenal, but I will leave the intel drop down below in this video's description. I'll I want to remind you that this Tuesday should be some Battle Pass marketing featuring a Black Cell trailer, roadmap, and an overview of all these store offerings for our third season. I'll be live streaming and breaking everything down this upcoming Tuesday, of course. But I'm actually really surprised with how much new equipment and how many perks we're going to be seeing here in our third season. To start off with that, as you guys can see in this graphic, there's a lot coming to multiplayer. So first off, a new perk called the Gunslinger Vest is going to be available at launch. This will give you the Secondary Weapon Specialist. You'll get no primary slots, but you get two secondaries. You get four equipment slots for tacticals. You get two for those, a lethal and a field upgrade. You then get four gear slots, so gloves, boots, and two gear. And then the following benefits will apply to secondary weapons only. Refreshes stamina on kill, improve reload speed, reload while sprinting, increases weapon swap speed by a minimum of 40%. And then you get some reserve ammo, right? You could spawn in with maximum reserve ammo. But then we also have the modular assault rig available at launch. This is a lethal and tactical scavenger perk. So you'll get five equipment slots, two for attacks, two for lethals, and one field upgrade, three gear slots, so gloves, boots, and gear, and you will start with maximum reserve ammo. You can resupply lethals and tacticals from dead players. But then we have what I've been waiting for, the compression carrier, also known as Quick Fix, assisted healing and gas protection. You'll get one equipment slot, which is a lethal. You get three gear slots, gloves, boots, and gear, and you'll immediately regenerate health after a kill or objective capture with reduced effects from gas grenades on top of that. But then we also have the new boots perk, so these are reinforced force boots, which makes you immune to movement reduction effects. Next up, the high gain antenna, and all this is available at launch by the way. The minimap is zoomed out for you and nearby allies. Enemies remain on radar longer for you and nearby allies if a nearby ally has the CCT comms vest perk, and you can see nearby ally radar pings from intel jacker and compass indicators from nearby ally signal jammers. What is coming mid-season though is the EMD mine, proximity triggered mine that sticks to surfaces. Once triggered, the mine shoots out tracker devices that reveal the enemy location and direction until removed. But lastly, there's a brand new field upgrade coming mid-season, the EVG, Enhanced Vision Goggles. You can toggle between normal vision and enhanced vision with integrated target highlighting. It does have limited battery though. So I think some footage of this did leak out a little while back, but we get an official view of it in the season three blog post. Now, before we continue, I just wanted to remind you about MitchCactus.com, where you can get assistance grinding camos, nukes, or schematics in MW3. These guys do not use unlock tools or any bannable methods and will actually help you play the game. Mitch Cactus is also supported by Trustpilot with over 10,000 verified reviews. You can use Go Dynamite for a limited time to save 5% off your order. But I think as far as weaponry, there's some really exciting offerings here for Season 3. First off, the FJX Horus, also known as the MP9. We had a variation of this in Advanced Warfare, but it'll be available in Sector 8 of the Season 3 Battle Pass, right? It is an SMG. It is not a pistol this time around, but still looks pretty damn exciting. It says it's an ultra-compact SMG with best in-class CQC damage and mobility. Now, as 18 levels, then we have the Morse Sniper Rifle, available in Sector 4 of the Battle Pass, and as 19 levels, it mentions that it's a single-loaded railgun delivering 
a high damage payload with excellent velocity and even penetration. Now, unlike the FJX, the more sniper isn't going to be available in Warzone Mobile day one. They'll probably end up adding that in during season three reloaded or maybe as late as season four. Not sure why that's going to be the case, but I do think that's going to happen periodically with certain weapon drops. They'll drop them in some games and not others. But lastly, we have the Gladiator melee weapon. As we talked about in a video last night, we have a beast glove skin for the Gladiator. It's going to be available for about $80 as a part of the Godzilla X Kong collab. The base version of the melee weapon is the Gladiator, which will be available in Sector 15, featuring six levels. As they wrote, it's a compact, concealable punch knife that was initially used by gamblers and politicians. But for those wondering, what's going on with the BAL-27, the iconic assault rifle from Advanced Warfare? Yes, I'm crossing my fingers for an Obsidian Steed blueprint, either in a battle pass or in some type of store offering in the future. The BAL-27 is going to be a classified unlock, either in the classified sector, which is probably the most likely scenario for mid-season. That'll be May 1st with Season 3 Reloaded, or it's going to be released through a weekly challenge at some point. However, I doubt that because we actually know that most of the amps they're about to talk about are for weekly challenges, and there's seven total, so I doubt the battle is going to be saved for that system, but yeah, it looks like it'll be available starting on May 1st. It mentions a bullpup prototype weapon designed to increase fire rate over time while the trigger is squeezed. The first four shots are slower to fire, but highly accurate, and the weapon does feature 19 different levels. But things get even crazier when you talk about the new aftermarket parts for our third season. These will transfer to every single game, including Warzone Mobile, and there's even some here for Modern Warfare 2 weaponry, which is really exciting. I don't think you can use them in Modern Warfare 2, though. It'll only be a system you can use in Modern Warfare 3. I would like to mention that it does confirm in the blog post you could use Arsenal coins inside of Warzone Mobile to unlock these amps. That's, of course, an in-game currency by just playing the game, right? Get kills, get wins, get a bunch of XP. You'll learn Arsenal coins that you can use to unlock various content inside of Warzone Mobile, most of which is transferable into Modern Warfare 3. Definitely take advantage of that if you guys don't want to go ahead and complete your weekly challenges. You can just go ahead, play some Warzone Mobile, or use the currency of Arsenal coins you may already have, and you can get some of these amps that way. Starting off first with the Jack Cutthroat. This will be available through a weekly challenge unlock, and it'll be compatible with the MCW, MTZ, M4, and the AMR9, as well as some SMG gun platforms, a 3D printed stock providing an unrivaled combination of speed and stability while aiming down sights. We then have the Jack Revenger kit, also available as a weekly unlock. It'll be compatible with the BP-50. It's a conversion kit turning the BP into a CQC legend, a 9mm caliber conversion with a short-ended receiver and high-capacity magazine. Next up, the Jack Jawbreaker, another weekly unlock, is for the KV broadside, converts a shotgun into a hard-hitting automatic battle rifle. That sounds scary and is probably going to end up being a meta for quite some time in one of the game modes, right? We then have the Jack Shadow Titan, another weekly. It's compatible with the Bruin MK9, converts the Bruin MK into a compact and integrally suppressed light support weapon chambered in 300 blackouts. We then have the Jack Patriot, available for the M16, yes, a Mono for 2 weapon, converts the M16 into a fully auto rifle with a heavy ported barrel built to provide superior recoil control and firing aim stability. So to give us that Cold War campaign M16, right, which was fully auto in that game, we next up have the Wardens, which we've been waiting for as a weekly unlock, dual wheeled Lockwood MK2s, essentially the Mono 1887s. As it says, right... As it says, relive the glory days, stir up the hornet's nest, and take down your enemies, leaving no loose ends with these museum-worthy Akimbo lever-action shotguns. Those are going to be scary. But then, coming towards the end, we have the Jack Atlas Kit. Available for the AMR-9, it will convert the weapon into an extremely lethal and accurate 5-round burst carbine chambered in 5.56. Now, as I've been doing, I'll be covering these amps every single Wednesday as they release. A bit of a new series here on the channel to show the aftermarket parts some more love, give you advice on what the easiest weekly challenges are to complete to unlock the new amp, we're going to continue that, of course, with Season 3. But lastly, we have the Photonic Charge Barrel, which we actually got some footage of in the recent Season 3 gameplay trailer. This is going to be for the new Morse Sniper Rifle. And as it says, this hyper-advanced barrel is more than simply a barrel. Holding the trigger charges the rifle and releasing fires a single high-power energy projectile. So I think it's not out of the realm of possibility to get some advanced warfare futuristic type attachments for our base weapons in the game. Some futuristic amps that convert the weapon into energy type weaponry or something else that is a bit different from the regular weapons we have inside of Modern Warfare 3. Really excited to see where they go with that. I wouldn't be surprised if we got like an EM-1 amp at some point since we don't have the base EM-1 weapon in this game. We had it in Vanguard, but wouldn't be shocked to see a laser attachment on an aftermarket part at some point. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on all of our brand new weapons coming in our third season? How are you feeling about the brand new aftermarket parts and even the new gameplay we got from the Rebirth Intel drop? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.
Thank you.